guys, today's piece is the first start to finish piece I've done in Krita. For those of you who do not follow my videos or know my body of work, I primarily work in traditional media such as charcoal, color pencils, watercolors, or acrylics. So digital media is a whole new media that I'm learning. Now the purpose of these videos is not only to give my insights as a traditional artist of over 40 years into digital media for the first time, but also allow some insights in comparing traditional media to digital and how traditional techniques can apply to a digital format. I have to mention every time I start a new piece in Krita that I have to change how the canvas is measured. The default measurement is in pixels, which I honestly can't apply to real world dimensions. And since I live in the US, I'm not familiar with the European measurement system involving dimensions being labeled A4, A5, A8, and etc. So when I start a new piece, I have to set the increments in inches so I have something I can mentally compare to a canvas or a piece of paper. I chose an 11 by 14 so I have a nice mid-sized canvas that is pretty commonly known and would give me a better understanding of how to apply the different brush sizes. Brushes in Krita are measured in pixels rather than traditional brushes that would be labeled like 0, double zero, six, eight, or quarter inch. Honestly that may be one of the things that I get a hold of and appreciate the fastest in this program as each manufacturer of brushes has their own stick to measure their brush size with so a number two master's touch synthetic bright brush may not be the same size or feel by Liquitex despite the material and the chosen style being dictated as being the same. I'm going to approach this piece as if it were commissioned by the owner. However, side note, this reference picture is of a 12 year old German Shepherd female which I took myself years ago at a local dog park. I've not been able to get a hold of the owner and I'm sure she's crossed her own rainbow bridge several years ago. Getting back to basics, I decided to go with a monochromatic charcoal look with a CFE or color for emphasis on the eye. This monochromatic palette would be rendered in charcoal while I would typically recreate the eye with colored pencils or pastels. That would make this piece labeled as a mixed media if rendered traditionally. The end game is to create a realistic charcoal feel for this piece while retaining the realistic style in the final drawing. So I'm not just trying to paint the dog, I'm also trying to replicate the attributes of traditional charcoal media in a digital format. It's a little bit of an extra challenge. Now, while Krita comes with standard with over a hundred different brushes, I tried to limit the amount of selection that I gave myself and just learn a handful of them. If you're looking for my thoughts on all of the Krita brushes, I will post a link here in a separate video where you can hear my take on each one of them and how useful I initially think they are and how they would compare to their counterpart traditional media. For this piece, I primarily used a soft pencil, soft blender, chisel blender, a hairbrush, and crackled texture for the background. That crackled brush really had some people thrown for a loop, but I would figure that if I experimented it long enough, you could probably replicate that crackle effect with maybe a damp paper towel. And Let's take a moment to discuss why I'm doing a CFE approach and only emphasizing the eyes. I got quite a few questions about this artistic choice. Because the eyes are considered the windows of the soul, I wanted those to stick out. 
a small way of reminding the viewer that while the body may pass, the soul goes on. The reason that the brown is not incorporated into other areas of the piece, such as the background, is simply because it would lessen the impact of the eye. If I were to add brown to say the background, it would not only visually lessen the impact, but it would also eliminate the creating that focal point within the piece for the viewer's eye to land and then continually be drawn back to. I'm making the eyes quite a bit brighter here than they are in the actual reference picture because I want them to stand out. This is an artistic break from the reference picture. If I mirrored and exactly duplicated the reference picture, they'd be too dark and you'd hardly even notice the color, thus reducing the pull of the viewer's attention and the pop that they have. As an artist, I want you to notice those eyes and be drawn into them. They need to be warm and they need to be bright. pastel in this piece was very useful and behaved very similar to how a charcoal or a pastel pencil would. So working with this brush was very easy and intuitive to someone who normally works with the actual medium rather than digital. Now I do have to say I did adjust the opacity several times throughout the course of this piece as well as the value of the pigments. While charcoal pencils have different hardnesses, I found that 100% opacity was close to drawing with almost an oil pastel. At 100% opacity, I felt like it laid on the piece very heavy with hard edges, kind of gaudy, and that 100% opacity well, really should be something to avoid in both black and white. It seemed like the extreme choice. Somewhere between the 60 and 80% opacity, I found comfortable, and similar to a 6B or 4B pencil in rendering pigment. Lowering the opacity feels the same as choosing a harder pencil or handling it with a lighter touch. Because adjusting the brushes and the opacity is so easy, this piece moved very quickly and smoothly along. I really like being able to have the reference picture posted up right next to the piece rather than when I'm doing traditional media and I have to constantly look up or switch between tabs and screens to compare and contrast them. Now initially, 
my first full piece was a full color render of a Palomino horse. And in doing that piece, I found I could appreciate something I never noticed with traditional media. How many pencil and brush strokes I make in one area. For each stroke, your computer remembers it and can delete it if necessary, which amused me to no end, but overall it made a nice reminder of how zen I find working on these pieces when I really get in the zone. The soft blender was easy to work with, but for over large surfaces, I found my computer lagging a bit. Now, I was recording this video with OBS and watching Netflix in the background, but the computer really didn't lag until I had a massive amount of area with that large brush. Now, I could have settled for a smooth background as I typically do with portraits, but I wanted a little bit more character and opted to use the crackle effect. This will add texture without the directional effect that some of the other brushes have, which can lead a viewer's eye right off the page and or detract from the subject itself. A slight blend would soften any lines, and then we're back to the dog itself. By putting the darkest parts of the background behind the dog, I get the freedom to use the natural contrast in the rim lighting to bring her forward and the natural gradient by producing a reverse vignette. To make the dog jump off the page, I'm looking for that high contrast along with that outline edge, eliminating them toward the bottom of the page so the effect seems to be as though the dog is looking right off the paper. Now, as I said, I didn't spend a lot of time on this. It was roughly five hours. And as I'm reviewing things, I'm already taking away things that I would change and try on another piece. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was very enlightening for me to complete this first challenge, and I can't wait to move on to another one.
let's talk about those highlights. Now, this stock was shot outside later in the day, and one of the reasons for picking this particular shot was the wonderful rim lighting around the muzzle and the ears. In this area of the piece, there was a break from what I would traditionally do rather than what I was able to do with Krita. And that is simply no pigment versus using white. Now, don't mistake me. On only two occasions did I go for a perfect white. The rest is a dilution of effectively gray. If it was done in color, it would be a dilution of yellow or blue. I found I usually didn't want to use less than a 10% dilution of the pigment in these areas because the highlight would look blown out and detract from the overall piece rather than adding to it. That is to say, I never used straight white, really. So to say it simply, stay away from the absolute when drawing with digital media. Even in erasers, 100% gives you a hard line when you zoom out. Making a piece look fake, it'll give you hard lines and edges, which can be difficult to fix later. You can always apply a similar technique to glazing in digital that you would in acrylics or oils. We should be able to explore how opacity and overlay gives similar effects, however, are hard to illustrate in this piece because, well, it's, it's monochromatic. Now, when you compare the amount of resources that it would take to complete this piece with a set of charcoal pencils with hardnesses ranging from carbon pencils, to, which is the hardest, to a 6B extra soft, it would have probably required a minimum of four pencils for drawing, two and three blending stumps, and of course my needed eraser. Because the cost of these materials plus paper and time would have been more, I would have slowed down and taken my time with this, being very careful to analyze each value and match it accordingly. I can say fairly safely that this same piece would have taken double time if I had done it in traditional media rather than digital. But what I know of traditional terms, I can also apply here digitally. If I want the hair to look coarser, I add contrast and I make the line harsher. Otherwise, I dial up the opacity. If I want the fur to look soft, or softer, not only do I start out with a larger brush with less contrast or less opacity, but I also focus on the shapes created in the anatomy, slowly pushing and pulling surfaces back and forth until I get the desired effect that I want.
benefits of working in digital media I find useful is the quick setup and teardown. You don't have to worry about covering a piece for damage, putting away pencils, covering panes, or protecting your canvas and paper. There's no wait for dry time, which is a huge jump in how much time it takes to do this. There's no sharpening pencils, just open up your program and your reference picture is right there, you're ready to go. When it comes to filming tutorials and recording progress, I have found additional benefits that I think you guys can appreciate. While doing the speed tutorial, I found it wonderful that I don't have to worry about something like the camera going in and out of focus because my hand is in the way, or being physically in the way of demonstrating what I'm doing. I also don't have to concern myself with filling up a memory card and being out of frame or lighting because all of these little editing bonuses result in better quality footage and no lost progress. <coughs> don't forget to save. There's no loss of brick and mortar materials either. As many traditional artists know, there is a large investment of time in setup and teardown to preserve your resources and your time spent, as well as deciding whether dedicating the material resources to a piece which has no purpose other than to demonstrate or teach a technique. In this way, I don't have to worry so much about whether or not I could afford to ruin a piece of paper and expend the materials in doing a tutorial that would not serve a profitable purpose as it would not be a finished piece to sell. next time, this is Alicia signing off from the new studio for Morning Hot Creations. I'll see you next time.
because years have slowed your fleetness, though your spirit still is strong, I promise I will take more time now, so that you can come along. Because you do not fear the future, living only in the now, I draw strength from your example, yet time keeps slipping somehow. Because the day will soon be coming, when I will no longer see you rise to greet me, but in memory, you will always walk with me. <laughs>